Hello, I'm Ethan from EWCRM. You are watching my Tech Stack Spotlight series where I discuss the full digital marketing picture, all the software that you need, why you need them, and how they all tie together to build a streamlined sales process for your business. I've built over 750 CRMs on dozens of different platforms and over 10 years of doing this line of work. I'm new to building a YouTube presence, so subscribe to my channel and I'm ready to download those 10 years onto different tutorials and training videos. Always feel free to email me any tech support questions that you have. And if you'd like any of these softwares that I've discussed, you can find discount links or promo codes on my YouTube channel or on my site, EWCRM.com. Today we're going to be talking about data enrichment. In the last few years, this field has really gotten exciting. So if you've been following my series, you've seen this roadmap before. So a little bit of a refresher. We start out the process by driving our lead, whether from our ads or however we're getting them there, with a call to action to a landing page. That landing page is going to gather basic information, perhaps the name, the email address, the company if we're B2B, or the address if it's something and we're a business that involves somebody's home, like home renovation or doing add-ons, things to that effect in construction. So there's two different types of data enrichment that we're going to talk about today. So we have a B2B enrichment. That's when we take that person, we find out a ton more information about the business, about their job, their position, a direct phone number, their LinkedIn address, how many people work at the company. I can go on and on. So our process starts out. That person's on our website or they got to that landing page. They hit submit. Our CRM, our quarterback on our team, processes that data in one second and, ought, and immediately tells Apollo, hey, go take a look at these three things, this person's name, this person's organization, and this person's email address, and let me know what you got. Apollo, if it finds it, is going to send back all of that data. So say, for instance, your lead is an early bird, and at 7.30 in the morning, they're on your landing page, but your sales team doesn't show up till 9 a.m., well, when your sales team shows up and they look at their dashboard on their CRM, well, look at that. They've got all of this additional data about that lead pulled right in. They know how long they've worked at the job. They could even get a link to click on it and see additional details on a, uh, directly on the Apollo app. Could be put right in the CRM, something like click this link to see additional data. The other way that you can utilize Apollo, so that was the direct way from the landing page, somebody's going right to it, we're requesting that person and getting, washing that data back. The other way we could use, use Apollo is, is we could be on the platform itself to harvest uh, more information and gather leads that we could then either export or uh, automatically sync with our CRM system. So if we go to the Apollo menu, let's search for, I just had a client that sold espresso machines. So how about we find all the coffee shops in Orlando, Florida? Why not? Okay, give it a second to think. Okay, company location. Okay, nailed it. Categories, it nailed it. And the restaurants, awesome. We've got 45 coffee shops that list in the Orlando area. We can see all the name of these organizations. We could send all of these organizations to our CRM by clicking here and hit, it, and you can click to export it and to send it over. We could also t take a look at more data. Let's take a look at Kiki's Breakfast Cafe. Okay, it's a subsidiary of Denny's. Started in 2006, got 750 employees, and here's all the people attached to it. We've got seniority, he's got the star, we've got their locations, we've got email addresses. Again, if I click this, look at that. I could push this gentleman right over to our CRM with all of that information. There, his corporation, his, uh, his organization, his email address, all of it. So on the other side of it, that's looking for a company, right? I searched for finding coffee shops in that area. Let's clear that out. What if I go the other side, how about Find me the CEO of coffee shops in Florida. Let's pick the whole state because there might only be a few in Orlando. Why not? Let's take a look. Okay, CEO, Florida, restaurants. 
Now, it didn't see, it didn't specifically target coffee shops. So you always have to be careful when you do these filters to make sure that's exactly what you want. But why not? For the purpose of this class, we got 413 CEOs that register in the state of Florida. So we've got the name of their organization. Let's take a look at Francisco, okay? He's been with the company since 2010. There, or excuse me, that's the company's information. You've got his direct uh, email. You have to burn a credit. So you get 110 credits per month. You need to burn one to use to get some of these information um, so that they're not spamming people. They're making sure that you're utilizing it on a one-by-one -one basis. But you've got the main company's phone number, the summary. All of this great data can be sitting ready for your sales rep before they even get to the uh, CRM. Now, the other side of it. So that was talking about getting somebody on a B2B, the location and getting somebody's address or the property. I'm pretty proud to say almost seven years ago, I, was the, I wrote the original Zapier integration for Property Radar, I'm the guy. So I know a good amount this about this company. If you've never heard of Property Radar and your business deals with anything involving an address, you're gonna be blown away by about what you're about to see. So Property Radar, the same thing as Apollo, we got two different things we can do on the integration side. We could say when somebody fills out our form, we could send it to the CRM and we could say, hey, Property Radar, go ahead and take a look at 1234 Park Avenue in Pittsburgh, where our client put in that they're located. I'm just making that address up and see what you've got. And if Property Radar returns something, we could return, oh, there's 500 different leads or fields that you could return. You could return simple things like the bedrooms, or the bed, bath, the size and square footage of the property, when the property was built, <clears throat> uh, what's the value of the house. But the really cool stuff is, is what is the person's equity in the house? Do they have a second mortgage? You could set up filters for alerting you when they take out a HELOC or anything like that. So now our, our lead comes in, they hit that button, one, two, three, four, Park, uh, uh, in Park Avenue in Pittsburgh. My sales rep can now see all that additional data. The other way, just like Apollo, you can search and harvest your leads inside of here. You can search for things. So you can set up lists that say, hey, why don't you target everybody in South Philadelphia that puts their house for sale? Okay, that's a simple filter I could set up. I could immediately, as when, when somebody's house gets put on for sale, I could immediately create a deal in my CRM system for my sales rep to know. Um, you could set up filters inside here. If we wanted to search for a criteria, we could say, hey, let me see everybody that's in foreclosure, okay? So you, uh, in the Philadelphia area, anything like that, you could set up these criterias and you could zoom and search in. I've got property radar set up right now on its heat map to show on value. So as you see, as I'm searching, zooming in on Philadelphia, these, this red and yellow area is, the, is where the more money is, okay? As it gets colder, as it gets the bluer, that's the lesser of the value. So as we zo zoom out on the United States a little more, as you see, the wealthy rich folks are down here on the beach living the good life, okay? So you can see. So you could set up filters for this that are just awesome. You could harvest leads. Let's scroll in and take a look at somebody's house and see what we got here. If it's your house out of the one in a 330 million chance, sorry. Let's take a look. We got 5507 Plymouth Avenue in Mercantile, Mer Mercanville, New Jersey. Of course, I picked a long, difficult name. There's the owners of this property. Here's when it was built. Here's their equity in the house. They have about 50% equity. They bought it in 2005, not bad. There's the lot size. So you could use all of these fields. You could target and say, I am in pool renovation. I wanna look everybody up in this long name town in New Jersey. I wanna see anybody that doesn't have a pool. Well, you could do that. I want to see anybody that doesn't have solar power. You could do that. I want to see anybody whose home equity value is over 25% or over 50%. This guy's estimated. They got 44% 44 uh, value they own in their equity. So you could do all these things. They put a $52,000 down payment. They purchased it for 263 dollars 726 in 2005. Again, Lots of awesome stuff. So two ways you can do both of these different softwares, either automatically harvesting that information from your landing page or inside of the platform itself and sending that property and that what you found, either the people, the organization, 
or the property itself, sending it all to your CRM system. Like I said, it's exciting times to be in sales. You can get a lot of more information than we ever used to be able to. If you want a discount on Apollo, there's a link on my website. You can go to ewcrm.com. I believe you get 110 free credits. The Property Radar folks, I've been, I've known them for a long time. Um, you can just go directly to propertyradar.com and sign up for there, or you can email me and I can register you in the portal. That at least lets me uh, let you get on my email list. You'll get all the tools that I send out on the emails on Property Radar. If you found this class of any value, please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to continue to pump out great data. So again, my name is Ethan. I'm from EWCRM. And again, thank you for watching my video.